Sonic. Lab. TV. Here's the Dave Smith Instruments Tetra. This is a four voice analog desktop synthesizer. You could think about it in a couple of ways. It could either be four times the MoFo, which was a single voice instrument, or half a Prophet 8. It's entirely up to you. Obviously you don't get the same level of control as you do with the Prophet 08, but you do get the same level of control as you do with the MoFo. Now we've already reviewed the DSi MoFo. You can see William H's excellent review elsewhere on this site. But let's take a look at the hardware and then a recap of the voice architecture. You don't get all that much in the box, but what you do get is manual, obviously the unit itself, and power supply which has rather a nifty faceplate changing system so you can change it for different kinds of parts of the world. One thing that is worth mentioning, the, the tail that comes with it is really, really long, which is very, very nice. And I mean really long, like, that's got to be about two or three metres. The unit's very similar looking to the MoFo, except it's got Profit 08 style knob caps. The fixed assigned knobs are exactly the same. You've got the overall pitch, cutoff frequency, resonance, attack and decay release. And also there's the now legendary push it button, which has four backlit indicators. Master volume, write, edit and assign parameter buttons are also present. The assign parameters allows you to assign whichever parameter you like to one of the four rotary encoders which you can use for tweaking the sound in real time. Round the back we've got the 13 default DC power supply input, a USB connector for hooking up to the computer, MIDI in, MIDI out and poly chain out for hooking this up to either the Prophet 08, a MoFo or indeed other Tetras to increase the number of voices. Finally, there are four dedicated audio outputs and a headphone out. This is where you see the first real difference because there is no audio input. So probably the best way to check out the internal architecture of the Tetra is by using the editor librarian. You can see that here. Uh, as you can see, there's an add to cart button just there, which actually means that this is a paid for software upgrade. It doesn't come with the unit itself. So for $39.99, you can download it from somebody called soundtower.com. Uh, they, I believe, make it not Dave Smith. There is an LE version, however, uh, allows you to access just the editor functions and not the library. So let's take a look at the basic architecture. Uh, there's two oscillators, a low pass filter, with envelope, a VCA with envelope, and a third envelope, plus four modulators and four syncable LFOs. Both the oscillators have a variable waveform. Sawtooth, triangle, saw triangle mix, and pulse width. Each oscillator also has a sub-oscillator. Oscillator one is one octave down. Oscillator two, two octaves down. The filter is a standard two pole, which can be switched to four pole mode, which means it will self oscillate. It's based on the SEMS chip, or it is in fact a SEMS chip, which is a sort of old school analog uh, integrated circuit chip, which uh, used to find in the sequential circuit six track, that kind of thing. There's also this interesting audio mod parameter, which modulates the FreeCF frequency at audio rates fed from oscillator one. Great for getting sort of bell-like tones and all sorts of weird stuff like that. Something else that you can do, uh, which has got an internal kind of feedback loop, it's a, is this feedback volume and feedback gain. Now what this allows you to do is feed the oscillator output back into itself. It's a bit like uh, taking a mini Moog headphone out jack and plugging it back into the audio in to get overdrive of various circuits. So if we just dial it in, you can get some interesting overdriven sounds, which just add a little more warmth and character to the sound. Envelope 3 is worth mention too, because that has this rather useful repeat mode. We've got envelope 3 set to the low pass filter frequency, add a bit of resonance so you can hear the envelope. Now if I switch it into repeat mode, it re-triggers and shortening the decay time, you sort of get like an additional LFO. So quite a generous selection of subtractive synthesis capabilities here in the Tetra uh, to create some very unusual and quite rich and warm sounds. 
Not much fun doing it from the front panel. Really, you're gonna need the software editor to get the most out of it. The Tetra also has another trick up its sleeve, and that is inside the basic voice architecture, there are two layers, an A layer and a B layer, each completely independent, each a fully functional Tetra voice in its own right. The layers can be split or layered, depending on how you wanna set them up. So if I switch to layer A, I've got this voice. And on layer B, I've got another voice, which I'll just bring up. Here, yeah, that's got a totally separate LFO. I can have that stack A and B or split A and B across the keyboard. Another really powerful aspect to the Tetra is its sequences. Each of the parts in a program, A and B, has an independent sequencer. And each of those sequencers has up to four layers that you can control. Let me just show you. Right, so right here, just got a fairly boring basic note. What I'm gonna do is switch the sequencer on. We'll go over here and have a look, see what it's doing. You can see layer one of the sequence is playing the sequence of notes. Layer two is modulating the low pass filter. And layer three is at the moment doing nothing, but I can easily just set that to affect the resonance. You can hear the difference there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the second layer of the sequence. Just go here. So now I've got two sequences running independently, and this one can be Again, totally. So that's a really powerful set of tools that you've got for modulating all kinds of frequencies, not just notes. And they can be tempo locked or they can be completely, again, totally random and independent of each other. Tetra 4 also has a combi mode, and this enables you to set up four independent programs to create some really powerful and moving patches. Let's take a look at this one and see how it's put together. So here's my combi called Carpenter Bees. Let's just take it apart. So, first voice is a, a rhythmic resonant sound with its own sequence running. Second voice is a little arpeggiator kind of vibe. Again, with its own sequence. Third voice is a faster arpeggio, again using a couple of oscillators with its own sequence of settings. And the fourth voice provides the top note, again with its own sequence of settings. Put them all together and I'm playing this off the keyboard. Quite a complicated and, you know, usable. You can almost play a whole tune out of this. There are 128 memory locations for Combi, so you can store lots and lots of them if you want. In fact, in the Tetra as it comes, there's loads of brilliantly programmed ones to get you started. And when you store a Combi, the program is stored with it. So if you edit the program that you've brought into a Combi voice, it's not gonna be changed if you then go back and edit the program, if you see what I mean. That's useful. One other mode of uh, operation we should look at, which is multi-timbral mode. So I enable multi-mode by going to the MIDI, Settings, I can do this via the front panel or via the software editor. Global settings, and I switch multi-mode on. So what this actually does is it assigns each of the four parts their own MIDI channel, starting with the bass channel of the unit going up in single channel steps. So now if I play this rather complicated uh, combination, I play it for a MIDI keyboard on one channel, I just access one single voice. And what this means is rather than use the internal sequencer on the unit, I can drive it from my own sequencer and have it play you know, whatever I want it to, which means obviously I'm not limited to 16 steps. Quite useful for multi-timbral settings. I would have liked to have seen the possibility of assigning more voices to a single MIDI channel. So you could have, say, a monophonic voice on channel one and then three voices on channel two or whatever, but you can't do that. That's just the way it goes. Another limitation of uh, multi-mode is when in multi-mode, these four assignable knobs have no effect on anything in the uh, patch whatsoever. And the bottom four, which are things like cutoff and resonance, they only affect the whole thing globally. So if you take the cutoff frequency down, it's the whole lot. Uh, the only way 
way to access individual parameters in while in multi mode is either via using an external channelized MIDI controller, or perhaps you can pre-program things into your sequencer so that they can play it on the re the required MIDI channels to access and tweak those individual parameters. On the whole, I enjoyed my time spent with the Dave Smith Tetra. I think it's got a certain sound that you just can't get anywhere else. On the downside, I think really the software editor and the communication with it was a little bit flaky. Sometimes it just wouldn't update parameters, sometimes it would flip in and out of multi-mode. It was not the most stable of editing experience, and that was a shame because I think the synthesizer itself is capable of some great stuff. The unit retails at 799 US dollars, 549 UK pounds, and about 620 euros. It's shipping now, so you should be able to get it pretty much everywhere. So, if you're after the Dave Smith sound and you want four voices, the Tetra should definitely be something you check out. However, I would be tempted maybe to hold out to see if there's a keyboard version so you can get your hands on all of those discrete parameters, because nothing beats a hands-on synth fest. <laughs>